YouTube Boss Rino. Welcome to my channel. Namiss ko kayo. 10 days ako walang reaction video dahil nag-upload tayo ng mga explore natin. Sa mga hindi pa nag-aabili ng kape ko sa TikTok at sa Shopee kayo makakabili ito. Sobrang sarap dito. Search lang Boss Rino. Rino copy sa TikTok at sa Shopee. At ito ang aming channel, Libal. Ayan. Kung nakikita nyo, ito ang aming channel, Libal. Subscribe nyo to dahil dito makikita nyo kaming kumakain. Na kumakain at nagdadaldalan ni Bal Baliw. So ito try natin to Nook Stop 5. So ito halo-halo 5 limitation coat on tape. So wag natin patagalin try natin to bago patirahin ng iba. What she saw. Hoy, tayo na parang ano to ah, parang true to life to ah. Ano, naka-pampers yata to. Oh. Oh shit! Lul, di ba pilih gula to? Kago, ni. Shockingly, Diane discovered that the tape revealed that her body had mysteriously levitated above the bed at some point during the night. The TV show Factor Fake. Sobrang ano, sobrang, ano ba tawag dito? Sobrang solid, sobrang pulido yung pag-angat. Di ba, pelikula yun? Attempted to replicate Diane's strange nocturnal levitation, but trying to reproduce the footage turned out to be harder than they expected. The crew had to spend thousands of dollars to build a massive metal frame. Wow, totoo yata yun, ha, yup! Frame with a complicated system of levers, pulleys, and wires. And then, even after all that, they had to process the finished video with CGI software Just to try to replicate the original video. So, lead tong isa. Eto nakita nyo may tali. Halatang may tumutulak dun sa part na to, oh. Halatang nakabalok to siya. Eto, so lead, eh. Paano kaya ginawa ito? Siguro sikreto niya yung pumpers. The Levitating Shaman. In the late 1970s, a German film crew were producing a documentary on a remote African tribe. Legend had it that the shaman of the tribe could perform amazing magical feats, including levitation. German documentary crew set up and began filming as the shaman performed his ritual. To their amazement, he was seemingly able to float oh, over two to three feet she. in the air for several minutes. He then collapsed to the ground from exhaustion. Oi, wala pang ano to ah. Luma yung video ah. Diba? Tsaka tribu sila. Tapos kailangan nasa outside sila. Wala sila sa studio. Kalimitan kasi sa studio na papaangat to eh. Pag may mga harness. Despite there being two cameras filming the shaman from different angles, the documentary filmmakers found no evidence of wires or harnesses that could be used to lift the shaman so high in the air. Oh my God. Dynamo. Totoo pala yung mga ganyan? Dynamo is the performing name for English magician Stephen Frame. Dynamo is best known for his television series, Dynamo, Magician Impossible, where levitation and illusions have become a common staple of the magician's bag of tricks. Dynamo has performed multiple unexplained illusions, including levitating in front of the world-famous statue of Jesus in Rio de Janeiro, and levitating against the side of a moving bus for a promotional series for Pepsi Max. Tricks to. I don't know if it's magic, but I feel like it's tricks to. In perhaps the most amazing levitation illusion ever performed, Dynamo levitated from the top of the building, the Shard in London, ah! which is the tallest oh my God, building in the UK. At first, critics called the trick a colossal fail, after the magician tweeted out a picture of the illusion a few days before it was scheduled to air. In the picture, close observers could clearly spot wires holding the magician in place. Or so they thought. Days later, when Dynamo's final TV show aired, the show included footage of Dynamo actually adding the fake wires into his own picture in Photoshop. In a dramatic twist on his own trick, he had actually managed to fool people into believing that he had done the trick with wires. A feat that likely would have been impossible considering that Dynamo actually seems to not only levitate to the top of the shard building, but continues to rise high above the structure where wires couldn't reach. To this Oy. day, no one knows exactly how Dynamo performed his amazing levitation trick. But one thing is certain, it wasn't with the aid of his photoshopped wires. 
The Enfield Levitation. Oh, you peanuts. The Enfield Haunting is perhaps one of the most famous hauntings in history. The case has been the subject of several books and documentaries. The Enfield Haunting gained national attention when it was investigated by famous paranormal researchers Ed and Lorraine Warren. This investigation later became the plot for the popular horror film The Conjuring 2. Now one of the most famous photos from the Enfield Haunting is that of 11 year old Janet Hodgson supposedly levitating above her bed. Many have dismissed the photo as simply a picture of the girl jumping from her bed and caught midair on film. However, multiple witnesses have claimed that Janet's levitations were a common occurrence and that they themselves had been present and saw the levitations with their own eyes. What makes this case especially odd are the other supernatural phenomena that were recorded in the house. Parapsychologist Maurice Gross conducted experiments where a lamp was repeatedly ripped from its wall socket and thrown across the room by some mysterious force. At one point, one of Janet Hodgson's shoes was seemingly thrown at him as he tried to leave. Two English policemen reported witnessing a chair levitate four inches off the ground and move down the hallway right in front of their eyes. It um, came off the floor, or maybe a half inch, I should say, and I saw it slide off to the right, about three and a half to four feet before it came to rest. Um, I checked to see whether or not it could possibly have slid along the floor. I placed a marble on the floor to see whether or not the marble would um, go in the same direction as the chair did, and it didn't, it didn't roll at all. Um, I checked for wires under the cushion of the chair, and I could find no explanation at all. And perhaps strangest of all, Janet Hodgson would often speak in the voice of a spirit she called Bill. No. Now keep in mind that the audio that you're about to hear is the recording of an 11-year-old ah, dito pala, gino, dito pala binasito, ano? girl speaking on tape. I want you to tell me whether you remember what happened to you when you died. Just before you died and just after you died. Oi, what goes outside that? There is the floor, I died. I did. I went blind. Then I had an emerald, and I fell asleep, and I died in a chair in the corner downstairs. Creepy. Creepy. The levitating monk. In the Discovery Show, The Supernaturalist. Dan White, a magician, traveled to exotic locations around the world to try to discover if any, quote, real magic, end quote, existed. White had heard stories that there was a Buddhist monk deep in the Himalayan mountains who was rumored to be able to reach a meditative state in which he could actually make himself levitate. The monastery where the monk resided was located in a remote area, miles into the Himalayan mountains, only reachable by airplane, and then an additional two-day hike deeper into the heart of mountain terrain. Eventually, Dan White found the reclusive monk and managed to convince him to try to levitate in front of their camera. The monk began to chant quietly to himself. Then suddenly, as the cameras rolled, he rose from the ground below and floated over a foot in the air for almost a minute before slowly descending. The host of the show, Dan White, a magician for over 20 years, could not explain how the monk had seemingly been able to make himself levitate right before their eyes. Wow. Uh, you po? There's, there's no wires. Uh, I'm not, I, I didn't see any. This is not a man. So, it's not a man. So, it's not a man. So, I'm going to say it's crazy. So, I feel like it's true. Ah, you po. There's no way to do this. This is one. It's so good. Five YouTubers who post videos in ghost camera. The top five YouTubers who caught ghosts in videos. Exploring with Josh. The YouTube channel Exploring with Josh is based around exploring creepy abandoned buildings, including some locations that are allegedly haunted. So maybe it should come as no surprise that occasionally Josh and his crew do happen upon a strange encounter in one of these structures. While exploring an abandoned school building that's covered in graffiti, including pentagrams and other strange satanic writings, 
The group experiences something they can't explain. Oh Guys. my god. Ito mga to, sobrang daming subscriber, pero pero ang dami nilang ang dami nilang explore sa umaga. No? So much doors are opening and closing right now. Oh my fucking god, did you get that on tape? That is insane. Oh my god, another door just closed. Oh my god. We gotta get the fuck out of here. Holy shit, we're just standing on a... Dude, upside down crosses? We're getting back to some dangerous shit, guys. After this encounter, Josh and his fellow explorers decide to leave the abandoned school. Angry and scared grandpa. The YouTube channel Angry Grandpa is a scripted series that features a guy recording the rage-fueled ramblings and adventures of his grumpy granddad. But in one of their videos, something very unscripted appears in the video. Ito si Lolo. Now just watch the trash can behind Angry Grandpa. They're going to your house because you had another stroke. <laughs> It appears that someone or something with a very small head is peering at them from behind the trash can. Then it disappears from sight. Nawala, no? The head seems oh, too shit. small to be that of a child. Uy, gago. Kala ko edit yun. Parang bumaba pa siya, no? Nakunan, bumaba pa siya. Tignan nyo. The head seems too small to be that of a child. Eee. Yeah. Now, what makes this clip especially believable is that the strange figure lurking in the background is not mentioned in the video at all. In fact, the producer behind the Angry Grandpa show didn't even notice the figure until people began pointing it out in the YouTube comments. Later, when he shows the clip to Angry Grandpa himself, at first he doesn't even see it. Whoa! What is it, Michael? I don't have no idea. Joe Weller's mental. Gogo, tota, tota, Asylum. YouTuber Joe Weller decided to film a YouTube video inside an abandoned mental hospital as a joke. But things get a bit more serious when they suddenly start hearing the taunting screams of a child from somewhere inside the building. However, Joe Weller and his co-hosts don't take the noises too seriously. They joke that it's probably just some kids who've wandered into the building. Jeez! Easy. Whoa! Hello? What the f was that? It's kids. Oh yeah, ganyan din ako eh. Ganyan din ako do sa ano, sa Cresta del Mar eh. Hindi ko iniisip eh. Pero takot-takot na ako. What do we do here? Calix and Gundogan. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Who's that man? But the noises intensify. Who's having the banter? Well, this is funny. Wait, imagine if it isn't even like. Right, um. Right, what are we do? Alright, you're just vandalizing now. No, nah, go near What do you do? What is it? Nothing. Hey, I beg you don't throw anything right now because we're just coming out. Hello? Is there anyone there? There's no one there. How did they run away so quick? Hello? Joe and his friend take the situation a bit more seriously when they find that there's no one else inside or around the building. Guava Juice Ghost. YouTuber Guava Juice has often claimed that his house is haunted by the spirit of one of the previous owners. In one video, he captures some strange knocking that seems to be coming from his attic. It's, 
definitely coming from up here. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh! I don't know, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. Joe Weller's Mental Asylum Revisited. Joe Weller's. So you saw YouTuber Joe Weller and his friend checking out an abandoned mental asylum in the video at number three. Well, after Joe Weller's video went viral, the YouTube channel VJAMA decided to check out the abandoned building for themselves. After checking to make sure the building is empty, they place flour on the floor. So if any kids or anyone else enters the building while they're inside, they'll know. No one else enters the building, but they do have a strange encounter when they find that a hospital meal cart has been rolled to block a doorway while they are inside. Both was done. We heard a bang. I think that's the kids though. What am I Filipino to? Huh? What? Oh, 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 oh. Shit! Oh, sorry guys, wait, wait, what the fuck was that? The f this is Nobody's fucking here. Wait, 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 wait. You know, you know, you know. Let's check, let's check if that. Wait, wait, check the floor, check the floor. Yo, yo, you man, check the floor, check the floor. Steps as well. Nobody's fucking here. I don't get this. But there's no one fucking. Look at the fucking floor. Oh my fucking. Nobody stood over here because it. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done now, guys. Somebody's in the building. It, it, oh, no, no, no. It is. Hey, you can Reach out the basement. Yo, yo. Fuck's sake, it's guys. It's all in it. Guys, I'm not even fucking joking anymore now. Hey, you might, you might, big, 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 Wait, wait, I'm checking down it again because there still has to be someone over here. That. Oh, shit! Oh, no. It's gone! Oh. What the yo, fuck? Yo, 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 I'm dipping out. I can't be asked for this. I can't be. I'm going. I'm going. I can't be asked for this. Ano ba nakita? Ba nakita ba siya kanina? Let's go, bro. That's so fucking weird. Yo, go pursue that. Fuck. Ano ba yun? It's fucked up, man. Oh my fuck. That was mental, bro. Fuck. Now, in this top five, I'm giving you the information as it was. Ano ba yung una nyo nakita? Ah, ito! Ito yung una nyo nakita! Tapos dito, wala na. Ayun, wala na. Tapos dito, wala na. Ay, gago. Let's go! Gago, sabi sa'yo, nakakatakot mag-explore. Top, if it's real or fake. So, you tell me what you think. Diba? Yung mga gusto mag-explore dyan, mag-isip-isip muna kayo ha. O, ito, last one. Exca scary Exorcism and Real Demonic Position Top 5 Kala na si Batman The Top 5 Real Exorcisms The Tanaku Exorcism In 2005, Irina Cornici, a 23-year-old nun, had moved to an isolated hilltop monastery in Romania Only weeks later, she began regularly giggling during Mass It didn't take long before she descended into utter madness and was diagnosed with schizophrenia Dr. Say Cornici believed she heard the devil talking to her, telling oh her she God. was sinful. After a two-week treatment, the hospital released her into the care of the monastery. But again, Cornici Exorcism to she started acting strangely. Father Daniel Corijanu, the priest of the monastery and four nuns, decided to try a different method of curing her. Exorcism. They bound Cornici to a cross, gagged her with a towel, and left her in a dank room at the convent for three days without food, where she died of suffocation and dehydration. The shocking case was widely publicized throughout the world, following a lengthy trial where the five were convicted of murdering Cornici. Just before his arrest, the 29-year-old priest stated during a Romanian TV interview, you can't take the devil out of people with pills. Clara Germana Sela in 1906, Clara Germana Sella was a 16-year-old orphan girl at St. Michael's Mission in Natal, South Africa. The story goes that Clara, who had lost all hope, made a pact with Satan. She soon began exhibiting odd behavior. She spoke and understood languages that were previously unknown to her. 
and she demonstrated clairvoyance by revealing strangers' most intimate secrets. According to witnesses, Clara could not touch blessed objects. She also had extraordinary strength, often beating up nuns who tried to restrain her. Allegedly, during several exorcisms, she levitated five feet in the air, oh, trying to strangle one of the priests, and cried out like a savage beast before finally the demon was forced out and the girl was healed. Anna Eklund In 1908, Anna Eklund was only 14 years old when she began showing signs of demonic possession after her caretakers reportedly cursed her by slipping magical herbs into her food. She would speak in tongues and in strange guttural voices. It is said that she would levitate and even cling to the walls of her bedroom. Itong ayoko makita. Okay pa ako doon sa umaangat eh. Pero yung uma umaakit sa wall na patalikod. <sighs> in 1912, Anna Eklund had her first exorcism performed, which brought relief for a short time. But soon, Anna became possessed again. But this time, by multiple demons. In 1928, three exorcisms were conducted at a convent in Erling, Iowa, and reportedly Anna was finally cured. In 2016, the story was picked up by director Andrew Jones and transformed into a movie inspired by the true story called The Exorcism of Anna Eklund. Arnie Cheyenne Johnson Hi. In 1981, the trial of Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, also known as the Devil Made Me Do It case, became the first known court case in the United States in which the defense pleaded not guilty by reason of demonic possession. In 1981, 19-year-old Arnie Johnson joined his girlfriend at the kennel where she worked with his sister and his girlfriend's cousin. Alan Bono, Johnson's landlord, came to bring the group lunch. Bono was heavily intoxicated when he started an argument with Arnie Johnson. Johnson, then growling like an animal, drew a five-inch pocket knife and stabbed Bono repeatedly. Bono died several hours later and Johnson was arrested. The day after the murder, the famous self-described demonologist couple Ed and Lorraine Warren, whom you may know from the Conjuring movies, told police that Johnson was possessed when the crime was committed. You see, Arnie Johnson had been present during one of the Warrens' exorcism rituals when the demon that possessed an 11-year-old boy fled the child's body to take up residence within Johnson. It was only months later that Johnson brutally murdered his landlord. Yeah. Arnie Johnson's defense lawyer argued in court that he was possessed by a demon at the time of the crime. But the judge ruled that such a defense could never be proven. Alam niyo ba mayroong nabasa na video, mayroong nabasa, mayroong nabasa na video na yung mga napopossess daw ay possible lang na depress. Oh, parang ganun. Annalise Michelle. The case of Annalise Michelle is... Ito sikat eh. Ito yung sa... Ito yung kwento nung sa uh, Conjuring. It was one of the most well-known exorcisms of yeah. all time. Oh, grabe pala nangyari sa kanya, no? Time. With the Hollywood movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Ay, exorcism, hindi pala Conjuring, sorry. Inspired by her story. Napanood ko to eh. Born in Germany in 1952, Annalise was raised by a Catholic family and grew up to be withdrawn and very religious. At only 16 years old, Annalise experienced epileptic seizures and was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy. See? Following See? Merong, may, na, ano, na, may, na, meron siyang epilepsy. A deep depression, the young girl was sent to a See? Depression? psychiatric hospital. It was during her stay that she started hearing voices. The voices would tell her that she was, quote, damned and would rot in hell. Annalise was prescribed anti-convulsion drugs for continuous seizures and a drug used to treat various psychosis, including schizophrenia, disturbed behavior, and delusions. However, her health did not improve, and Annalise began to attribute it to demonic possession. At 20 years old, she complained about seeing, quote, devil faces, and became intolerant of sacred places and objects. Convinced that her problems were not medical, Annalise left the psychiatric hospital and went to San Damiano, a church near Assisi, Italy. Unfortunately, the Catholic girl soon worsened Kawawa. physically and displayed aggression and self-injury. She even began to drink her own urine and eat insects. Convinced that she was possessed, her family appealed for an exorcism. Though the appeal was rejected at first, two priests finally got permission from the local bishop in 1975. 
Annalise went through 67 exorcism sessions. 67 exorcism during the sessions, she refused to eat. Eventually, Annalise died at her home on July 1st, 1976. She was only 23 years old. The autopsy report stated that the cause of death was malnutrition and dehydration. Her parents and the priests were charged with negligent homicide. One of the priests allowed a few of the exorcism sessions to be recorded. Here's a small clip of the truly disturbing audio tapes. Oh my god, ito humanda kayo ha, yung audio dito. Oh my god. Yeah. Grabe, nakakatakot, no? Grabe. Grabe. 